Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is another episode of the Future Hour. Thank you so much for taking this time. And today, the guest is, um, wait a minute. <laughs> today, I'm your guest. So let's just jump right into it. There are a few very interesting things、uh, that we're going to talk about. We're talking about the ideology behind Bitcoin technology and philosophy. That's number one. And number two is that. The future of working or remote working. Or the future of work. What is going to be like? And painting a picture in our mind, right? Because the podcast called the Future Hour. Obviously, we're going to talk about the future, and then leading into、uh, one of my role models. His name is Baology. Question about my e-residency in Estonia, where I'm going after Madrid, and what is my plan, right? Well, let me. To tell you something really quick right now, the plan is that the future is always gonna work out. The future is gonna take care of itself by you and me and us taking care of the present. So let's jump right into it. Okay. The ideology consists three primary beliefs: viewing Bitcoin's technology as a more trustworthy than its people and than the current banking system, and because. It is based on cryptography, and it's essentially math, right? So math become law when it comes to this Bitcoin network, right? And where does it lead to? It reject corrupt social hierarchies related to money, right? Because there is math involved. There are only twenty one millions of Bitcoins. No one. And no organization and no social hierarchy can just press a button and print more Bitcoin, in a way, right? And we all have been impacted since the 2008 financial crisis, and even、uh, within the, these two years, the European Central Bank printed out a lot of euros, and I think a few days ago,、um, the United States government they printed out a few trillion dollars as well. And which is very interesting, right? Maybe back in 2008, they were still talking about a few billions, <laughs> and now everything comes with trillion, right? Which is nine zeros. Think about that.、Huh? All the money going to the market, and、uh, where does it go to?、Um, how is it exactly benefiting the people, right? Anyway, back to the ideology, right? And the importance of accumulating or holding quantities of Bitcoin or any actually、uh, cryptocurrency as a strategy to create an ideal future, and this is where、um, the community comes in, right? People get on this network and people believe in this network. People believe in this technology, and every single person who is on this network. Who is holding this token or coin, if you will, and become a stakeholder of this network? A way to understand is that, for example, when you buy、um, Apple stock or a technology company or whatever company, right? You automatically become the stakeholder for that company, right? And then. Which is essentially put your eggs in the basket. You trust the network, you trust the company, you see the vision, and you want to become an important part of this network. And you even maybe even want to bring more people onto this network, right? And it's just like Facebook,、um, in a way that more people using Facebook, the more valuable the network and the company or the project is. So the same thing with Bitcoin, right? The philosophy behind Bitcoin, operating as an open source ledger referred to as a blockchain, Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency whose transactions are verified through a network of nodes, which are computers, and protected through cryptography. There are quite a few、um, terms or big words here, you know. Blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin, and、uh, decentralized, which is means that it's distributed within the network. There's no king, there's no、uh, one person or one organization put the trigger and make all the decisions. 
、um, that's where the future going. If you check it out, the last episode, Christina, which is actor, acting editor in chief of Coin Telegraph, she also mentioned about even her organization, Coin Telegraph, as a news and media organization, is already become decentralized as well, right? Because people are working from their home or from their home countries, and everybody is. Most of the people are in different locations. Maybe someone in Germany, someone in China, someone in Madrid, someone in East Coast, West Coast, Texas, you know, Venezia, Italia, you name it, right? So that's decentralized, and transactions are verified through a network of nodes, which means that,、uh, long story short, is that all the transactions are. Being verified by old computers to calculate this super complicated math problem, essentially, right? And they take various block to verify the transaction, and、um, that is also why nowadays Bitcoin transaction could take I don't know ten to ten minutes to sixty minutes or even take hours. So、um, there is that. And protected through cryptography, right? And、um, this is gonna lead to something.、Uh, what my role model biology has said: cryptography and math and smart contract are becoming the new law. And when the law are fulfilled its function automatically, and then imagine all the people on the network and more and more people on the planet are becoming. More and more trusting within each other. Imagine this environment that the law is already there, and everybody comes in, have this consensus, have this agreement about we believe in cryptography, we trust math, we trust、um, decentralized technology, right? Because these、um, decentralized technology with cryptography are essentially built. To be unhackable, and no one can just press a button and stop it. Why? Because it's part of the internet. If they tried or if they want to stop blockchain, essentially they need to unplug the internet.、Um, can we imagine that? And obviously, there will be some terms or kind of terminology when it comes to like fifty-one percent attack and this and that, but that's for、uh, later on. And、um, I'm not going to explain it because that's a future hour podcast. I'm going to find absolute expert to come on the show and explain it because they can explain it way, way, way better than I do. So this is something connected with the holding, which means that you buy the coin and you hold. Uh, you it's like you hold on for your dear life, you know. You just hold it because you believe in it, ah,、uh, and that is also from another perspective that when news or legacy media or someone have big influence talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum or this and that, the price might go up so much or also might go down so much. It is because obviously it's good. The more and more people get on the network. However, there are always, always people get on the network for the money, for the short term, and that is okay. That is totally okay, right? But when they get into the network for the short term, is exactly the opposite of huddling. Of you truly believing this technology can create an idea future. They just want to get in because they think and they believe they can make money quick. And yes, indeed, there are many ways of making money quick. But come on, you got to be an expert, you know.、Um, so, with that said, hodling the cryptocurrency that you truly, truly believe in, within with investing in the amount of money that you are hundred percent willing to lose, and in a few years, most likely that. The money you invest in, it could be ten x, it could be hundred x, it could be five x, it could be a thousand x, and this is just name out of game, and this is just the future that we're creating, right? Which everybody that who are truly believe in these networks and these technologies 
they can and they shall have financial freedom, like people like you and I. So biology said, <clears throat> excuse me, it's way easier to cut down your expenses by five times than to make five times more money. Right, and I'm using this example of compared to Los Angeles with, um, let's say, Sevilla or Malaga, which is um beautiful, beautiful two cities in the state of Andalusia in the south of Spain. They're gorgeous, and、um, for those who don't know, um, the the book behind me <laughs> about Pablo Picasso, Blue and Rose periods. And、uh, Pablo Picasso was actually born in Malaga, so you know,、um, I was there visit for a few days. Gorgeous city. Anyway, so the cost of living in Los Angeles, if you want to have a comfortable life, don't call me on that exactly number, but let's say if you want to have a really really comfortable life, maybe you gotta spend I don't know eighty k, eighty thousand dollars, or maybe a hundred thousand dollars, right? For example, right, and maybe on the other hand, if you're living in Sevilla or you're living in Malaga, and potentially you might even you might not cut down that cost into twenty thousand dollars exactly, but maybe you could live super comfortably with spending forty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars a year, or maybe even less. Depends on the person, right? Depends on how crazy you want to go into when it comes to cut down your expenses. When you're doing that, although you might be making the same amount amount of money, maybe one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, or two hundred thousand dollars a year, or I don't know, half million dollars a year, but in this way, you can save way much more money, right? This example earlier, you're making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, but in LA, you live comfortably, you spend one hundred thousand dollars a year, which means that each year you only save fifty thousand dollars. Where on the other hand, let's say you, if you live in Sevilla or Malaga, you spend fifty thousand dollars a year while you're making a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, which means that each year in LA you save fifty k, but in Malaga or Sevilla you save a hundred k a year. So each year you save fifty k more, right? That's year number one. You spend fifty k. You save fifty k more, and then year number two, if you're living in LA, you'll be you save a hundred k, and then. In Andalusia, you will be able to save two hundred k, right? And within that, you can save a lot more money by having the same amount of、um, cost of living, the quality, and in this way, is way more efficient. Does that make sense? Okay. And why do you want to save more money? Because in this way, the biology called this、uh, the personal runway, right? Because you actually don't necessarily need to be a millionaire or a billionaire or a trillionaire to have the life you wanted. You know, for example, if you don't want to live in Andalusia, where you could go to Thailand, where you could go to an island that is not Bali, the other islands in Indonesia, and they are super super cheap, or in the Philippines, and it's amazing. You're by the beach. It's very less people, and the food is good. It's amazing. It's delicious, right?、Uh, when I was in Bali, I had this.、Um, although Bali is a touristy spot, I still have like spent five euro get a super super nice massive meal with the drinks. Think about that, huh? And also, the nature is amazing. Go to the beach. You can learn surfing. Anyway, so you save more money within short. Shorter period of time in this way gave a boost for your personal runway, right? And maybe when you save, you know, a hundred k or two hundred k or whatever amount of money, and then you can truly go ahead, do more so of the things you want to do, follow your dreams. Whether you want to publish a book, you want to start a fashion brand, you want to start a podcast, you want to do a media company, you want to do consulting, or you want to travel around the world. Or you want to buy a house and get married, or you want to I don't know buy a mini、uh, buy a small plane and、uh, or whatever, right? You want to hire a few blockchain developer to start your own blockchain career, your own blockchain project, or whatever it is you want. The money 
the financial freedom give you this opportunity to do that, so that you no longer trade your time for money. As I mentioned this before, trading your time for money was in the past. Essentially, it became a huge thing. Roughly, I don't know. Don't quote me on the years. Uh, two hundred, three hundred years ago, when um. Henry Ford, roughly two hundred years ago, when Henry Ford started this thing called the production line, right? I'm gonna pay you so much more, but you come to work on my、uh, factory. In my factory, that every single day you're doing exactly the same thing, and I'm gonna pay you so so much more, right? And I would say it was starting that moment when human become a little bit more machine like, right? Because every day you're doing the same thing, right? And now when it comes to the production line for cars, they we have robots to do that. But anyway, then which means that we can now with the help of technology and such as internet and blockchain and cryptocurrency, now we can free ourselves from that, right? And this is essential. One of the biggest reasons I'm doing this podcast so that I can. Share this vibe, share this message to other people, so that we can more people can achieve financial freedom. We're all in this journey together, and when we, I genuinely believe that when we're all achieving financial freedom, we are just go out there and being creative and creating a brighter future and doing the things we truly like. And now, this is a quote Balji mentioned about BTC. It's happening. We had states, then we got a network, and now we will get network states. Okay, who is my role model? Who is this guy? Right, named Biology. Biology S. Srinivasan is an angel investor and entrepreneur, formerly the CTO of Coinbase, which they just went public, and general partner at Anderson Horowitz. He was also the co-founder at Earn. dot com. Console, Teleport, and Coin Center. He holds a PhD in electrical engineering and an MS in mechanical engineering, all from Stanford University, where he teaches the occasional classes, which is one of them are super good. is called Startup Engineering, I believe. is phenomenal. His Twitter bio is summed up as immutable money, which is you know Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the cryptocurrencies. Maybe not all, but. A lot of them, infinite frontier, eternal life, and of course Bitcoin. Balaji has turned his attention these days to the creation of a network state, in particular a sharp focus with transhumanist mission, which starts with a virtual university bootstraps a digital economy and can be forked to create new opt-in politics. Such as cloud cities should allow their members to collectively negotiate with existing jurisdictions and crowdfund territory in the real world with the internet as main governance mechanism. Even those physical communities could be increasingly decentralized as well. Here are some of his quotes. I'm gonna say all of them first, and then we、we'll、come back explain them. Okay. So with social networks, the use predated the monetization. With cryptocurrency, the monetization predated the use. Right. And this is something、uh, the example I gave earlier about Facebook. Right. The social networks people use it first, and then whether the Facebook go public or start to monetize, you know, users' data in this way. Right. Use first. And then monetization come after. With cryptocurrency, the monetization actually comes first, right? Because people are issuing all these tokens, and they have value, and they could be converted into, for example, if you want, they could be converted into euros, dollars, yuan, or whatever, right? If that's something you want. Monetization predated the use when they come to cryptocurrency, and as the large nation states of the present continue to lose power, we will see the formation of true network state, which is mentioned earlier. Cloud first, people from all over the world get onto this network first. They believe in something together, right? For example, Bitcoin. You know, everybody believe in this decentralized technology. The money and power are in the hands of the people, right? So, 
the formation of true network states first, and then he said we will see just the beginning of this trend in two very different case studies. And one of them is the digital forward cyber polity of Estonia. And this actually goes to the explanation of Estonia and my e-residency. Okay. So a lot of people have been asking me about this and um, this is definitely not something over our head, you know, something super simple. For example, e-residency is for people who want to set up a company in Europe, but not live there. Maybe not live in Europe or not live in Estonia, right? And uh, when you apply and being accepted, you will receive certain kind of benefits, right? You can establish an Estonian company online and great for anyone wanting to enter the European market. To keep that in mind, you can manage your Estonian company from anywhere in the world. Residency is not a requirement, right? This is kind of like to back uh, earlier, right? The network state, right? Although Estonia is very, very small. Let me look up the population here really quick. Estonia population. The population of Estonia, uh, according to 2019, is only 1.3 million people. Um, imagine that. Okay. Like Beijing has 22 million people, right? Uh, anyway, so you can... Um, and the country is only that big. And how could they attract more stakeholders, right? By issuing this e-residency, right? So that people are not living in Estonia, now they become the stakeholder of the state, right? Um, you can manage your company from anywhere in the world. You can digitally sign and verify the authenticity of signed documents because I believe it's been longer 10 years uh, or so um, the Estonian government have been putting a lot of their work, nearly most of their government infrastructure onto the blockchain, which is fantastic. You know, I encourage um, if anyone listen to this, you are a politician or you're going to be a politician, keep that in mind. You know, it just, the future is coming. It's like huge wave. You either adopt it or you're just going to be swallowed by it, you know, and um, trust me, you don't want to be the latter. And you can declare Estonian corporate taxes online, which is very awesome, right? Um, I believe here in Spain, paying taxes is a hassle, and especially and definitely in America, right? Um, I believe in 2021 that still in America, you can apply taxes online, but you can also fill it out and mail it in. Like, come on. Waste of money, waste of time, waste of resources. Right. Uh, apply for digital business banking and online payment services, and you will have this login. When you log in with your e residency, you will see uh, the whole service they're providing and more and more. They're very very cool. So and also at the end, encrypt and send documents securely, and all that come with the e residency, right? And. Um, my friends and other people uh, have been asking me, "Oh, where are you gonna go after Madrid?" short answer is Los Angeles. The long answer is I will be where I need to be to take care of things. And then at least I'm going to be back in LA for a little while. And the whole world is mine and is our oyster. Then now, plus everybody, we can uh, working remotely, then you should just travel and experience and see the world. You know, I have not seen Safari before. I have not been to Brazil. I have not been to the Amazon. And there are plenty, plenty of places I want to explore. And many, many people and friends I want to visit on this planet. So anyway, and this is just something like a bonus, right? So there is in Estonia, they also have a digital nomad visa. And what is that, right? Um, this is definitely something interesting for people who want to live in, within the EU or want to live in Estonia. They could check this out, right? The digital no the digital nomad visa is for people who want to live in Estonia. Okay. Some information to compare the digital nomad visa and the e-residency. According to Estonian tax legislation, someone with e-residency is not determined to be 
is determined to be a non-resident. As a result, only income that is earned in Estonia is taxed. However, an Estonian company established by an e-resident is considered to be an Estonian tax resident, and as such, an annual tax return should be filed. The tax rate in Estonia is currently twenty percent, and.、Uh, I actually would like to hear your opinion on that. Twenty percent taxes is that high? Is that low? What do you guys think? I do know that Dubai is way less, and Singapore is probably ten percent. And、um, so, drop、uh, drop some comments. Let me know. And keep going. It is important to keep in mind that Estonia is a relatively small country, as I mentioned before. It would be interesting to see something comparable to the e-residency. Applied in a country with a bigger population, you know. So back to that, what I mentioned as well. If you are a politician, if you are going to be a politician, think about that, right? You can truly use your. I don't even like this word. You can truly use your power that people have give you to do something very interesting, right? To attract. Tourism, one way. For example, I'm currently in Spain, right? There's so many tourists in Madrid. It's awesome, and tourism is one way to attract people to become your stakeholder and love your culture and love your food and、uh, all that. An e-residency is actually a way to attract people to become your stakeholder without them coming, right? And、um, last thing to wrap it up, it is it's paperless government service and use of blockchain technology make. Estonia, one of the most innovative governments around the planet today, and、uh, we can hope that with time, other countries will begin to look at Estonia as an example of how integrate technology, how to integrate technology and government together, right? And I believe and I trust the Chinese government is also doing something with that, and if they are not, I would be surprised. Right. With all that said, the blockchain technology is definitely something is very very interesting. The governments, big and small, are looking to it, including your government as well. I'm sure. And then you and I, as leaders or the participants of the future, right? Because when the future comes, it's gonna come in the form of present, right? Then what can we do to be best prepared for the future? Which is, in a way, you speculate all these trends. What are some things is definitely going to happen in the future, and you learn about it as much as possible. And when the future comes in the form of present, you will be ready. Whether you are already financially independent. Whether you are already know so much about this industry, or whether you are already become a thought leader within that industry, that is what I encourage everybody to do. This is Jazzy from the Future Hour. Thank you so much, and see you next Thursday.